we have the pleasure of having director crc lucknow shri ramesh pandey sir uh, under whose administration and under whose direction we are now able to focus on uh, extra things uh, beyond the usual 21 types of uh, disabilities that uh, usually crcs and national institutes focus on and uh, we are also happy to tell you that uh, uh, recently is uh, crc lucknow and national institutes uh, we have collaborated with the ncert and other uh, hackathon programs to widen the horizon of crc lucknow so before we can begin i kindly request our director shri ramesh pandey sir to give our opening remarks please thank you thank you ganesh ji bahut bahut dhanyawad aaj ke crc lucknow ke is webinar iska vishay hai exercise counter measures in micro gravity environment uski hamari resource person garima rishi kumar patel jo ki ex teaching associate rahi hain international space university france mein madam main aapka apne ministry ki taraf se apne department ki taraf se apne crc lucknow ke sabhi officers ki aur se sabhi beneficiaries ki aur se bahut swagat karta hu jitne participant is program mein jude hain unka bhi bahut swagat hai हमारे इस प्रोग्राम के कोऑर्डिनेटर श्री जी शंकर गणेश जी आपके प्रति आभार और जो लोग भी इस कार्यक्रम को सोशल मीडिया के माध्यम से ऑनलाइन माध्यम से सुनेंगे उन सबको भी आभार मुझे बहुत खुशी है कि गरिमा जी आज हमारे साथ इस प्रोग्राम में हैं जितने स्टूडेंट्स पेरेंट्स और दूसरे लोग स्ट्रीट होल्डर्स इस प्रोग्राम में जुड़ के मैडम के इस लेक्चर को सुनेंगे मुझे डेफिनेटली पूरा विश्वास है कि वो इस प्रोग्राम से बहुत लाभान्वित होंगी और फ्यूचर में भी जो ये वीडियो जो आपको रिकॉर्डिंग है मतलब इस प्रोग्राम की हम लोग अपने यूट्यूब चैनल पर डालते हैं और उसको फ्यूचर में भी लोग रेफरेंस के रूप में उसका प्रयोग करेंगे उसका यूज करेंगे बहुत ज़्यादा समय ना लेते हुए मैं फिर से गर्मा जी आपका बहुत स्वागत करता हूँ सभी पार्टिसिपेंट्स का फिर से स्वागत करता हूँ और जी शंकर गणेश जी के प्रति और दूसरे फिजियोथेरेपी यूनिट हमारे कर्मचारियों को प्रति अपनी शुभकामनाएं शुभेच्छा प्रकट करता हूँ बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर फॉर योर वर्ड्स ऑफ एनकरेजमेंट एंड वेलकम एक्चुअली जैसे ऑलरेडी बताया था कि यूजुअली हमारा मिनिस्ट्री इम्पायरमेंट डिसेबिलिटी को रोकने का भी काफी काम करते हैं उसके साथ साथ में हम लोग नया साइंटिफिक दिशा में भी हमारा जो फोकस है उसको आगे बढ़ाते हुए जाते हैं तो वन सच एरिया इज द स्पेस मिशन वेर एक्सरसाइज काउंटर मेशर इज कॉमनली अप्लाई टू एस्ट्रोनॉमर्स टू मिटिकेट द माइक्रो ग्रेविटी इंड्यूस्ड फिजियोलॉजिकल अडेप्टेशन हम लोगों को सब पता है जब एस्ट्रोनॉट स्पेस के दौर जाते हैं वहां पर ग्रेविटी का कोई काम नहीं होता है उसके कारण उसका मास फेसिया हड्डियाँ और कार्डियो रेस्पिरेटरी में काफी चेंजेस होते हैं तो इसको कैसे मिटिकेट कर देंगे मतलब उन लोगों को किस तरह का एक्सरसाइज स्पेस पे करना चाहिए एंड जब वो लोग धरती पे वापस आता है तब भी उनको किस तरह का एक्सरसाइज करना है Uh, इसके बारे में आज थोड़ा सा विषय देखते हैं एंड uh, हम लोग ऑलरेडी इसके ऊपर एक प्रोग्राम किए हुए हैं रिगार्डिंग द फिजियोलॉजी एनाटॉमी एंड फिजियोलॉजिकल चेंजेस ड्यूरिंग स्पेस स्पेस में क्या क्या चेंजेस होते हैं एंड हाउ वी नीड टू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट द इफेक्ट्स ऑफ द नॉन ग्रेविटी एनवायरनमेंट ऑन ह्यूमन बॉडी हम लोग इसके बारे में यूजुअली नहीं देखते हैं क्योंकि जब भी हम लोग एक्सरसाइज करते हैं हम लोग अर्थ में करते हैं वेर वी आर हैबिचुअली सब्जेक्टेड टू द इफेक्ट्स ऑफ ग्रेविटी बट इन स्पेस इट विल बी अ डिफरेंट एनवायरनमेंट जब स्पेस से वापस आना है जब उन लोगों को फिर इंडिया सॉरी अर्थ में रहना है तब उनको क्या क्या काम करना है कैसे एक्सरसाइज करना है उसके बारे में आज देखेंगे एंड जब मैं थोड़ा सा इसके बारे में थोड़ा सा इंट्रोडक्शन कर रहा था या आई वॉज रिसर्चिंग ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक एंड uh, मुझे पता चला कि दिस स्पेस प्रोग्राम स्पेस एक्सरसाइज काउंटर इंट्यूटिव मेशर्स इट्स नॉट जस्ट अबाउट मसल जॉइंट और कार्डियो रेस्पिरेटरी फंक्शन उसके साथ साथ में एनर्जी बैलेंस भी है <coughs> जैसे एस्ट्रॉनट स्पेस में जो कम एनर्जी का खाना खाते हैं और बहुत एनर्जी खर्चा हो जाता है पर उसके साथ साथ में एक्सरसाइज करने का एक्सरसाइज कैसे करना है उसके बारे में हम लोग को थोड़ा सा देखना है एंड होपली uh, ये देखते हैं जाएंगे एंड स्पेस प्रोग्राम्स तो अभी बहुत कमर्शियलाइज भी हो रहे हैं तो सो प्रॉब्ली बाय द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन वी विल नो हाउ करंट एक्सरसाइज काउंटर मेशर प्रोग्राम कैन बी चैलेंज एंड उसका क्या क्या अल्टरनेटिव तरीका है उसके बारे में भी देखेंगे 
एंड uh, आपको कोई सवाल हो आप डायरेक्टली चैट बॉक्स में लिख सकते हैं एट द एंड ऑफ द प्रोग्राम यू विल आल्सो गेट एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू डायरेक्टली आज द रिसोर्स पर्सन द क्वेश्चन एंड विदाउट मच टाइम आई वुड लाइक टू वेलकम मिसेस गरिमा ऋषि पटेल एंड शी इज वन ऑफ द फ्यू फिजियोथेरापिस्ट हु इज ट्रेंड इन स्पेस स्टडीज प्रोग्राम फ्रॉम इंटरनेशनल स्पेस यूनिवर्सिटी एंड उनका स्पेशल थैंक्स है बिकॉज शी इज ज्वाइनिंग ऑल द वे फ्रॉम ग्लासगो स्कोर स्कॉटलैंड एट सच अ इयरली आवर्स so i really thank her i'm uh, really thanking her for accepting our invitation so without much delay i would like to welcome ms uh, garima please thank you so much sir and i will start my screen share so i believe it is visible and i'm um, audible clearly yes please go ahead so um welcome everyone to the webinar and i hope uh, ki jo ye webinar attend kar rahe hain वो ये जानते हैं कि और जैसा अभी गणेश सर ने भी कहा कि जब एस्ट्रोनॉट स्पेस में जाते हैं तब माइक्रोग्राविटी की वजह से बॉडी में कुछ एडेप्टेशन होते हैं जिन्हें हम डीकंडीशनिंग कहते हैं क्यों क्योंकि ये जो फिजियोलॉजिकल एडेप्टेशन होते हैं इनकी वजह से जो वर्किंग एबिलिटीज है एस्ट्रोनॉट्स का दैट कैन बी अफेक्टेड एंड दिस अफेक्शन कैन हैव डायरेक्ट इम्पैक्ट ऑन दी स्पेस मिशन दूसरा जब वो वापस अर्थ पे आते हैं तो उनको डेली एक्टिविटीज करने में भी परेशानी होती है सो टू मिटिगेट दीज इफेक्ट्स एंड टू ऑप्टिमाइज ह्यूमन परफॉर्मेंस इन स्पेस मल्टीडिसिप्लिनरी अप्रोच इज बीन डेवलप्ड जैसे कि मेडिसिन सो देर आर हमने जब फिजोलॉजिकल एडेप्टेशन देखे थे सो देर वर न्यूमरस फिजोलॉजिकल एडेप्टेशन दैट वॉज हैपनिंग इन एस्ट्रोनॉट बॉडी एंड देर आर सर्टन ड्रग्स विच कैन मिटिगेट दैम द सेकेंड इज फॉर एग्जाम्पल से इंजीनियरिंग सो जब हम माइक्रोग्राविटी की बात करते हैं तो एक्चुअली एक एस्ट्रोनॉट डिफरेंट जी फोर्सेस से होके गुजरता है फाइनली टू रीच माइक्रोग्राविटी फॉर एग्जाम्पल अर्थ का ग्रेविटी इज वन जी वेन दे आर लॉन्चिंग दे आर एक्सपोज टू हाइपर जी फोर्सेज फॉर एग्जाम्पल प्लस फाइव दैट इज फाइव टाइम्स दैट दैट ऑफ द अर्थ एंड फाइनली दे लैंड अप इन माइक्रो ग्रेविटी सो अ बॉडी एनकाउंटर्स डिफरेंट और ऑल्टर्ड ग्रेविटी स्टेट्स एंड टू दिस एन इंजीनियरिंग टीम हैज कम अप विथ वेरी गुड आइडियाज फॉर एग्जाम्पल कि जब लॉन्च हो रहा है तो कैप्स्यूल में um, एस्ट्रोनॉट सुपाइन पोजिशन में होते हैं सो दैट डिफरेंट डिरेक्शन जो एक्स वाई और जी डिरेक्शन है उसमें से जो बेस्ट टॉलरेबल डिरेक्शन है उस डिरेक्शन में ग्रेविटी अगर आएगी तो नेगेटिव इफेक्ट इतने नहीं होंगे और इन जितने भी ये मल्टी डिसिप्लिनरी टीम है उनमें से एक और इम्पोर्टेंट काउंटर मेजर है दैट इज एक्सरसाइज सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू know about the exercise counter measures where i'll be talking about um in flight exercise equipments because these are not the same when the astronauts are trained on earth they are trained on different equipments and in a gym setup lekin jab wo upar space mein jaate hain they only have few hardwares to exercise on then followed by what are the different exercises that have been prescribed and how we are monitoring them followed by i'll give few examples how space physiotherapy or the advances or the technologies which are being done in space is been applicable to the patients on earth so I, i'm just going to give few examples to give an idea that it is not only that the uh, physiotherapy which practice on earth is been implemented but it also has a reciprocal effects or uses so whenever an astronaut is been selected and then been assigned to a mission the we divide that mission phase for physical training into three components okay pehla hota hai pre flight pre flight means astronaut ka selection hua hai and unko mission assign kiya hai till the launch 
The second is the in-flight. In-flight is after launch till re-entry. मतलब वो स्पेस में पहुंच गए हैं और जब तक वो वापस अर्थ पे लैंड नहीं होते हैं दैट इज द इन फ्लाइट एंड फॉलोड बाय दिस इज द पोस्ट फ्लाइट दैट इज वंस दे आर बैक फ्रॉम द स्पेस ऑन अर्थ कंप्लीटिंग देयर मिशन डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द ड्यूरेशन ऑफ द टोटल मिशन ओके इट इट कैन बी अ शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन स्पेस फ्लाइट और अ लॉन्ग ड्यूरेशन स्पेस फ्लाइट नाउ कमिंग टू द ट्रेनिंग अप्रोच नो प्री फ्लाइट जितने भी एस्ट्रोनोट हैं टू गेट सिलेक्टेड दे हैव टू मीट द बेसिक सिलेक्शन क्राइटेरिया लाइक योर हाइट एंड वेट एंड देन दे हैव टू पास अ रिग्रेस असेसमेंट ओके एंड हियर ओनली द लेफ्ट ऑफ द स्क्रीन जस्ट uh you know pasted a picture like different components which are being used to uh, test a particular astronaut and then a detailed examination uh which comprises of body composition flexibility muscle strength including the hand grip strength power core muscle endurance postural stability cardiovascular capacity all this examination or testing is been done for a particular uh astronaut Now, followed by this the data is matched with the standard criteria and an exercise protocol is customized using the fit principle now when i say a standardized criteria so each agency has their own criteria to be matched upon okay and it differs so sabka criteria अलग है और जो एस्ट्रोनॉट जिस क्रू के लिए सिलेक्ट हुआ है तो उनको उस स्पेस एजेंसी का क्राइटेरिया फॉलो करना होता है ऑल दो आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द इन फ्लाइट एक्सरसाइजेस इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट हियर आई टॉक लिटल बिट अबाउट द प्री फ्लाइट ट्रेनिंग बिकॉज दिस फॉर्म्स द बेसिस ऑफ इन फ्लाइट एक्सरसाइज program so the goals of pre flight training is to prepare the astronauts for space conduct pre flight measures and familiarize the astronaut with the in flight training program with correct techniques so exercising on earth is totally different how we exercise in space okay so pehli cheez gravity is not going to be there second jo इक्विपमेंट्स और जो फैसिलिटीज हमारे पास अर्थ पे अवेलेबल होगा वो सारा फैसिलिटीज वहां नहीं होगा सो वी कॉल इट एज वी हैव टू ट्रेन देम फॉर विच ऑल इक्विपमेंट्स आर प्रेजेंट इन द स्पेस स्टेशन एंड हाउ दे आर गोइंग टू यूज देम सो यूजुअली सॉरी सो यूजुअली अ प्री फ्लाइट फेज जो होता है इट वेन द मिशन इज Uh, you know a point uh, an astronaut has been appointed for a mission which is usually uh, a one year period and prior to the launch the exercise program will be uh, consisting of a mix of supervised and unsupervised session supervised session may we have typical gym exercises okay but the specific focus will be development and implementation of individualized international space station in flight exercise program uh during pre flight uh, on a regular basis say uh, every month once in every month astronauts are requested to provide their training data uh, which will include the type of exercises they have performed the time the intensity um, and their personal feedbacks and all these data in conjunction with the results from the standardized pre flight test what we have done on them they are used by us to customize the exercise program for them now this period when they are here with us on earth uh, with a physio it is very important uh, because we have to build a trusting relationships and uh, to maximize the compliance uh, throughout the one year it's not that daily an astronaut will be seeing a physiotherapist now they can they physiotherapy or a uh, physical fitness it, it is a component of astronaut training so they have another components lots of other trainings which are being taken up by them and physical training is a component of that so 
it's not that we will see them daily. So before the launch, uh, there is a period of around, say, a week or 10 days where we'll be seeing them daily. And then this is the time when we build those, uh, you know, a good relationship so that once they are in flight, they can tell us whatever they are feeling or if they are they want to change the protocol or any other problems if they are having it. OK, and the most important aspect of uh, pre-flight training is the replica training. That is. Once uh, they are being physically fit to be launched in this space, they will be coming to the uh, exercise countermeasure section of the training at uh, astronaut training center. So here I'm going to show you a small video. OK, where um, an astronaut is going to demonstrate he can say ye equipment or your device will uh, space station may use cutting. You know, this is the resistance training hardware um, on board. It is called as a red. That is advanced resistive exercise device. OK, now this is slightly different uh, than the squat track in the local gym, but uh, it has um, some of these similar functions when we talk about the different exercises that can be performed uh, just by using this particular uh, or one equipment. OK, so it's me kya hota hai ki jab अपना वर्कआउट करके आ जाते हैं हम इस एक सेक्शन में इस एक डिवाइस से कैसे ट्रेनिंग इस वो हम इनको सिक्योरिटी रेप्लिका इन्होंने जैसे ये एक जो डिवाइस है इसी एक डिवाइस से वो डिफरेंट एक्सरसाइजेस कर सकते हैं फॉर एग्जांपल वो स्क्वाट्स कर सकते हैं डेडलिफ्ट्स कर सकते हैं बेंच प्रेस कर सकते हैं शोल्डर प्रेस कर सकते हैं एंड सो ऑन सो अब देख सकते हैं ऑन द डिफरेंट फोर कॉर्नर्स डिफरेंट एक्सरसाइजेस आर बीन परफॉर्म जस्ट बाय यूजिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर डिवाइस नाउ हाउ नो दिस a device has two canisters uh, which is having vacuum in it so that the astronauts they are actually pulling against this vacuum now remember we do not have g loads there and here the knob which he has just touched it's actually a knob which can set up different load handle uh, which is there it can change how much weight Now, before that, uh, this bar, which is here, it has to be adjusted for the height. So individual astronaut will adjust the bar height according to their requirement. So what they have to do is they just have to rotate the handles, either lift the bar up or down, depending upon the requirement. OK, fix it and then start exercising. Now, you can see a yellow platform here, which is also be there on board and the ex exercise are actually been performed standing on the platform so they have to stand in the platform and perform the exercise remember this black in in the exercise countermeasure room this is not there uh, in international space station so what equipment which you will see is only this much so with the bar handles with the knob the canisters and the yellow platform OK, and this is how we teach them that different exercises to to be done uh, by one day. OK, now that was about the resistive. So if we talk about the International Space Station, ki, so there are only three equipments um, which are available. One that you have seen, A red. This is for resistance training. And there are two more. One is the cycle ergometer, and another one is the treadmill, which is for the cardiac workout. Now, before actually going into the equipment, other equipment, we'll see what are the goals of in-flight exercise countermeasures. One, which of microgravity. So the goals here is to maintain good health conditions and 
high working capacity of the crew members and this also depends upon what mission has been assigned to a particular astronaut for example whether a uh, astronaut will be doing a spacewalk or not uh, so we call spacewalk as an extravehicular activity that is eva so if a astronaut is going to perform uh, eva the exercise protocol is going to be slightly different than those who are not going to perform an eva okay then second to prevent any alterations in the cardiovascular systems muscular systems the bone and so on and finally the last part of the goals is to save the coordination abilities which will allow them to maintain a vertical position to stand or walk in case of emergency once they are landing on earth although a supporting crew will be available on earth but sometimes in case of emergency they are required to do so and also when they have to egress from the capsule um, egress from the capsule means once um, uh, uh, the astronauts on earth they have to come out on their own so that maneuver has to be done independently and later on we have the uh, you know support crew who uh, you know support them to come out and then uh, other measurements are taken care of which is very important to know um in size devices for use in space they must consider certain factors First, the absence of effect. Thus, the object um, and body weight must be accounted for the devices which are designed for exercises that either rely partly or entirely on body weight for the exercise stimulus because there is no gravity. Um, for a weightlifting resistance device, resistance means. Um, the load capacity of the device must provide sufficient maximal loading for strongest crew member which will be performing the exercises with a significant body weight component such as if they have to perform a squat and for running exercise the crew member must be restrained in a manner which will create a reaction forces which are comparable to running on earth okay but when these are producing these forces, it should also allow the natural rise and fall of the body center of mass during the entire gait cycle. So that was the first concern. Second, the independent mode of exercise and the devices must be carefully isolated from space vehicle or habitat to prevent the transmission of vibration forces and the torques to the spacecraft. So we will be second component that is the vibration isolation and stabilization what we call this because whenever an exercise is been which which will be created now an international space station you have different rooms which is called as each module Needed work to be done inside it and these vibrations or the torques which are generated may hamper or have an adverse effect on the different works which are going on into the other modules by so keeping in mind both these pointed like, like the gravity is not there and the forces which are being generated equipments are being made like we have seen uh, for uh, strength training or for resistance training, the A red, the vacuum cylinders, and the astronaut has to pull against it. So, uh, again, depending upon uh, the module, whether it is NASA from America, ESA, that is European, CSA, or a Russian, so there are the, the equipments which are available for a particular astronaut differs. So, for example, if an astronaut is from NASA, they will have um, access to ARED, SEVIS, and Colbert. SEVIS is the cycle ergometer isolation system, and Colbert is the treadmill. Okay. Whereas, if someone uh, is been selected for a 
pedestrian module, then they will be having a BD2 treadmill and a they all differ in the modes or the uh, you know workloads which they can provide to a particular astronauts and that's why different devices have been in into the space system okay? okay so now we will be seeing individual equipment and how the um, astronauts are exercising on them so on my on the right, you can see two astronauts are exercising on it. This is uh, called as I red. It stands for interim. So I red is interim resistive exercise device. This was previously installed in the NASA module, and now this has been replaced by the A red. That is the advanced resistive exercise device. Now, this is the same device which we have seen into the uh, replica training. The difference why it was uh, one of the prime advantage of a red why it has replaced i red was that the i red was able to provide a load from five to one thirty six kgs, and a red it can provide. Uh, loads from 2.2 to 272 kg so more variability of you know loading is available for a red and th that is why a red has replaced i red so these are the exercise sheets and this is how using a single device different exercises are being performed so they have to adjust the bars height they have to use a proper posture and technique to perform a particular exercise the second equipment is the uh, cycle ergometer it is called as the cvs that is cycle ergometer with vibration isolation and stabilization now this has a harness now this harness will keep which is uh, with the help of the uh, hooks, it will keep him on the uh, ergometer, cycle ergometer. And here at the down, if you can see a white color mounts, now these are the isolation mounts. Now these mounts are very important because this will prevent the transmission of forces which are being generated during exercises. Now you can see here, he has he's wearing the harness and he is putting on his biking shoes each astronaut has their own biking shoes and they have to replace them once the exercises is been done okay so he's gonna you know put on the biking shoes he has to buckle um, the harness and also when they are exercising they have to put on their polar watches chest straps so that we can monitor you know the required data or the uh, cardiorespiratory parameters now once this setup is done if they want a monitor is there above and they can also listen to the music or if they want to see some videos they can see your videos while performing the exercise here at the back you can see a small box which is called as the control box the astronaut has to insert their data card data card is where all the information regarding a particular astronaut is been put and in their data card they will be having which uh, what type of exercises are has to be done for a particular session once they accept it they have to start pedaling during pedaling an rpm that is the rate per minute with which they have to pedal is being set and they have to maintain that rpm in order to get the benefits of uh CVS exercise for a particular session okay. the next equipment here is the treadmill i'm sorry both of them have started okay. So the next equipment here is the treadmill. That is TVS. On my left side is the TVS. That is treadmill with vibration isolation and stabilization. And you can see here an astronaut is, you know, running on it. And actually, she is joining a marathon, which is going on, or which was actually going on, 
on Earth. Now, just as an icebreaker, could anyone identify who is this famous NASA female astronaut? Because I've been speaking for a quite long time. Anyone can just unmute and say. If you want, I can replay. Who is this famous female NASA astronaut? Or Indo-American, I can say. Indian-American astronaut. Anyone? Garima, it's usually logged. It's mic. Uh, it's muted till the end of the program. Who, sir? You can't hear me. No, no, no. Not you. The participants can't participate uh, till we open it up. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. I just thought that you know because I'm be speaking, so it will be kind of icebreaker. No, no, no. no. You are audible. Actually, the participants they will be allowed at the end of the session to ask their questions. Okay. As so of now, I'll, it's muted. Okay, so I'll just keep this question for the end yeah, then. Please. Here, thank you, sir. Mm. Here, so moving ahead, so I'll just stop this video. And currently, like uh, you know, the I uh, I read was replaced by A read in the same manner. Uh, the TVs is now been replaced by Colbert. Colbert, it is combined operational. Uh, load bearing external resistance treadmill okay now tvs it was providing a motorized speed up to 16 kilometers per hour whereas cold bird which is also called as the second generation treadmill or t2 it can provide a speed up uh, to 20.4 kilometers per hour this is also with uh, you know equipped with vibration isolation and stabilization so that we don't transfer the forces. Um, here, we will see how now uh, the astronaut is going to harness and perform an exercise. So you have a harness with a strap adjustable. And they are adjustable by individual so that you know the load bearing is equal on shoulder and your hips. This harness can be here plugged into the hooks here which is attached to the treadmill with a bungee cord so white the thing which you can see here is the bungee cord and these are the hooks now these hooks here are actually uh, providing the load which has been set up so harness is been hooked with this uh, different hooks and on the monitor the astronaut has to you know enter the her personal details followed by which the exercise protocol uh, will come up and the exercise protocol will actually show how much is the target here it is showing 100 and how much because of when she's standing with the cord attached it is around 100 302 once it is similar load is seen when standing on the treadmill uh, she has to accept the particular protocol followed by uh, it will be showing the heart rate and the total duration and the different parameters of a particular treadmill exercise, what is typically being performed on earth. Okay, so just have to click start and begin with the exercise. Now, the important component here for Colbert is when I talked about the different hooks, which can be attached to the harness and that will be actually providing the load. So we have numbers of hook so if you want to reduce the load you have to choose less sorry more number of hooks so it is loose and if you want more load you have to go for a less number of hooks so depending upon which hooks or how many numbers of hooks you are actually using the load will be varied on a coal bird or on a treadmill which has been used uh, in space Now, coming to the exercise countermeasure. So what we have just now seen were the different equipments and how they are being used uh, to perform exercise. So we have treadmill, we have cycle ergometer, and we have an area that is for the resistance training. 
Now, coming to the exercise countermeasures, uh, depending upon the different agencies, they are usually divide the exercise countermeasures into phases so as to begin with the exercise, increase the load, and prepare for reentry. So, ESA, that is European Space Agency, they typically divide it into three phases. Uh, the duration of each phase uh, is varied depending upon the length of the mission, whether it is short duration or long duration, as well as the individual crew members uh, specific factors, including uh, how they are adapting to microgravity and which um, exercise hardwares are available to them, whether they will they are crewed up with the NASA or uh, say for uh, Russian crew members. Now, typically for in-flight exercise, uh, an adaptation time of two to three weeks is scheduled, which is called as the adaptation phase or the first phase. Uh, with the first exercise session will be planned for cycle ergometer. Okay, the first scheduled exercise bout uh, will uh, remain maximum of sixty minutes, and it is conducted um, no earlier than the second day after the arrival in space. This will be followed by increase in exercise time and loading uh, to finally reach up to the two and a half hours of exercise. So initially with 60 minutes and then gradually progressing to two and a half hours. This two and a half hours includes all everything that is the exercise time, their setting up, store and uh, maintaining having their own personal hygiene. Um, the use of cycle ergometer, uh, treadmill, and resistive uh, exercise devices, it is balanced in uh, this phase with uh, four to five sessions per device. Uh, in each week, okay, and the intensity here in the first phase will be relatively low, for example, say 50 to 60 percent of the pre flight capacity uh, of a, for a particular astronaut, and then we are going to subsequently increase it. The second phase, which is the main phase, which is um, designed to prevent the microgravity effects, here the training loads for the resistance exercise are going to increase uh, at the rate of 3 to 5% five, uh, 5 per week, while uh, the rate of increase in treadmill, and that is the speed and the vertical loading through the harness, uh, it is less structured. So. We know that resistance exercise, it is going to increase by three to 5% per week, but for cardiac work workout, it will be dependent upon the crew member. So training, but the training loads, these are targeted uh, towards 80% or more than 80% for their maximal exercise capacity. Now, <clears throat> um, coming to the preparation for re-entry. Now, this is the, a last phase of the exercise countermeasure, that is the final, um, say, 15 to 30 days, which are remaining once they'll be back on Earth. Here we prepare the crew members for rigorous uh, re-entry and any emergency landing scenarios. So what happens here is during the last three to four weeks, uh, the training loads, these are kept very high with an increased focus on resistive exercise and treadmill running and elimination of cycle ergometry. So if possible, we have to increase uh, the loads to the maximum, but ensuring that we are not, um, you know, uh, having any injuries to the uh, astronauts. Um, when I say about uh, the preparation for re-entry and adaptation and main phase, so we started with the uh, cycle ergometer, then we introduced treadmill and uh, resistive protocol. And when we are preparing them, I said that we will be more focusing upon treadmill and resistive and less on the um, uh, cycle ergometry. Now, why this is so? Because once they will be back on the earth, the treadmill running will stimulate how they're going to stand and walk. Okay, and we need to have the strength to stand and walk. So that's why uh, more focus is on these two type of exercises. Then now we have seen uh, the three phases and how you know we are going to begin and then loads will be added or increased. 
we'll see individual prescriptions how it has been given so the exercise prescription for resistance training has two phases okay like how we saw different phases we try to adapt the astronaut first and then increase and then you know prepare them for re-entry so resistance training is similar so in phase one uh, uh, this will allow the crew member to adjust to the microgravity environment and also help us to determine appropriate loads which are to be given for uh, the resistance training and phase two is to mitigate the effects of microgravity now as we have seen in space physiology the muscles and the bones of lower limbs they are more sensitive to microgravity adaptations so the main resistive exercises which um, will be prescribed or are usually prescribed they are focused on the lower body so for example you'll be having more of squats heel raises deadlifts okay and these are performed during every sessions with minor variations for example addition of a sumo, uh, sumo squats now to provide a variety for the crew member and to ensure that a comprehensive whole body workout uh, is been done so you also add a range of other resistive exercises for example bench presses okay now here we can see that I've jotted down two phases. Phase one uh, typically has three workouts, okay? And each workout will be uh, having a warm up, then a primary exercises, which is focusing on lower body followed by a cool down, okay? Once the astronaut is adapted, then we will switch over to the phase two where three workouts what we are having will be providing three variations in terms of repetitions or loads to those particular uh, workouts which are been previously designed for example we can have a warm-up set for a uh, you know of eight repetitions or we can provide four sets of six repetitions or three sets of eight repetitions so we can have all these variations to be uh, available for a particular astronaut. And we have to see to it that each workout, it is composed of at least uh, six to seven exercises. Uh, in this phase, the pre-flight performance and the personal feedback, what we have uh, you know, asked the astronauts when before their launch, they are being used to update this exercise prescription and also to modify the exercise program. So this is an um, example of an A-RED protocol. So down here, you can see session one, session two, and session three. And here are the different exercises which are listed, uh, which has to be done. So what I can do is here to make a, a um, you know, resisted exercise protocol, I can here decide what percentage of one RM has to be done and then which exercise to be done, how many sets, how many repetitions to be done. So for example, I can say it like one, two, and three. So we can have four sets, six repetitions, or 10, 12 repetitions, or eight repetitions. And then again, because we want all these exercises to have a variable load, I can you know, mix it match like two, three, and one, and so on as the load increases. So the A red, the in-flight protocol, uh, it's divided into uh, three macro cycles, okay? And the repetition maximum loads in the second macro cycle. So this is the first micro cycle, what you can see. And if you want to increase the load for a particular exercise, it will depend how the first cycle was performed. Now, for the lower body, the exercise, uh, you know, uh, the session will consist of a light day or a heavy day or a medium day, depending upon what load has been prescribed for a particular exercise. Now, the initial load, uh, it will, like I said, it will be determined upon by the pre-flight. So how we calculate it is, so for lower body for example say uh, six eight or you know 12 repetition maximums they can be calculated uh, from 10 rm 
uh, at 75 percent of the astronauts body weight so this is the baseline from where we start from 70 to 75 percent and then gradually we are going to increase so as to compensate for the loss of body weight in microgravity the next is for the cardiac workout now we know that we have two equipments cycle ergometer and treadmill so the recommendation to partition um, the aerobic session between the treadmill and the cycle ergometer by nasa it is like four days per week of treadmill and two days per week of uh, bicycle ergometer now this is one of the recommendations but it can be altered in some um, you know circumstances like um, if you have to accommodate some crew preferences or there are some you know medical conditions or the availability of hardwares and other conditions so although it has been you know um, recommended you can uh, adjust as according to individual requirement now the exercise protocols uh, prescribed for each crew member for the cardiac out, uh, cardiac workout it will be based on maximum oxygen consumption uh, which is measured during pre flight that is the vo2 max what we call and the cardiorespiratory program it consists of different protocols like uh, how we have it on earth so we have bruce protocol modified bruce protocol on earth similarly uh, what type of training you want to do it in flight the protocols differ so you can have an interval protocol or steady state protocol but the aim is to maintain the aerobic fitness at or above 75 to 80 percent of the pre-flight value um here you can see like uh the ARET protocol here it is the CVS protocol and here i've jotted down the different um exercise protocol for example you have a simple right protocol here which suggests at what we are to max you'll be working upon or a, a modified green leaf protocol and so on so the CVS protocol they are based again on the pre-flight vo2 max consumption so and it is based on the graded um, cycle ergometer test, what we will be doing it. And based upon that, we formulate the in-flight exercise. Now, this is how a CVS protocol will look like. Uh, if I have to give you an example for, um, say, Canadian astronaut, so a steady state protocols for them, they will be performing at approximately 80% of their pre-flight VO2 max and interval protocols, they will be performed between 60 to 90% of the VO2 max and the rest stages, it will vary between 40 to 50%. So as I said, each space agency has their own recommendations and has their own uh, treatment plan which is customized for every astronaut. So you cannot generalize it like how we do it on you know, patients or individuals on Earth. Now, this is the T2. So treadmill protocols, these were created again with the crew members participation uh, during their pre-flight phase. And the intensity will be increased throughout modifying uh, their running speed, the interval duration and uh, the uh, hooks which is attached to the bungee cords, the loads can be varied. Now the treadmill uh, here, uh, um, the, when the astronaut is exercising, they will be using both the motorized and the non-motorized mode with uh, initial loads at least 60% of the body weight. And it has to be gradually increased to 70 to 80% during the uh, mission. And we will be using the harness which the astronaut was wearing while performing the exercise to increase the load throughout the mission. Now, here is the whole exercise prescription, what it looks like for um, an astronaut, which includes all the resistive protocol, the treadmill, and the cycle ergometer. So the, the, here we can see the type. So you can go for an interval training, varied protocol, start initially with a lower load, and finally, uh, for resistive, 3 to 5% increase per week, and total time is 60 same way for treadmill so you have internal training uh, interval training or you have a steady training decide the load and go it for three, 30 minutes and finally the cycle ergometer 
same stuff over here the, you have to decide which you have to go you have to go for a slope training or an interval training so while prescribing what you have to do is you have to target the vo2 max and the duration for which it has been done so this is what it looks like now when all these exercises they are doing and once the exercise bouts are finished it is our responsibility to monitor those exercises because monitoring has um dual benefits first it will help us to know whether the astronaut is performing up to the mark or up to the level which has been set for him and second whether any adaptations or any changes has to be made for the subsequent next week or next month program okay so for resistive exercises uh total number of repetitions and sets and the loads these are recorded and we have an automated data capturing system so the data files they will be downloaded once per week and then it will be reviewed by us following which um, you know we'll be providing higher loads uh, which can be given now when ared was installed um, at from that time uh, also a video coaching session has been given for the astronauts so there are total three minimum of three uh, coaching sessions to familiarize themselves and if they are having any problems with the load adjustments or performing a particular set of exercises so all these concerns are being uh, you know taken care of with the help of uh, the uh, coaching sessions and finally um, you know uh, the last one after the familiarization and once we get the feedback uh, when we are increasing the loads how to increase when to increase and how much to increase all these uh, you know uh, details or all these these training is again given in one uh, you know one of the coaching sessions uh, which have been conducted for the astronauts and finally um, on monthly basis we will be going for a periodic exercise conference that is pec we call it as so we'll be uh, with the crew member uh, we will be re uh, reviewing all the aspects of uh, the previous month exercises or the uh, activities and uh, what is planned for the next you know uh, exercise sessions and if uh, they agree they do not agree so if we have to change or if we do not have to if they are fine with it or any uh, injuries they are coming up with so all these points are uh, being covered um, in the conference now coming to the cardiovascular so heart rate uh, during the cardiovascular exercise sessions these are monitored using a chest strap uh, which will be having a transmitter and we can also ask uh, we also ask the astronauts to wear a polar watch um, this gives uh, the data regarding the heart rate and the workload and all the relative uh, data which uh, uh, which is required for a uh, cardiovascular exercises and we again uh, uh, we have the access to directly download it per week and we monitor their fitness considering um, VO2 max and we also have to go for an exercise testing while they are on board and it is uh, the exercise testing is done uh, by using submaximal standards that is uh, 25 to 75 percent of VO2 max and this exercise testing what we start is usually from day 15 once they have uh, reached uh, the space and then on monthly basis for data analysis uh, at European Astro Astronaut Center, they have um, Microsoft Excel and statistics program. They also prepare the prescriptions and can be emailed to the um, astronauts and so on. NASA has their own app application that is the cms application which can be used to generate and upload protocols and nowadays there are a number of other applications which are being available commercially available that can be you know readily available for all of us to use and uh, most of the analog astronauts program they are using many applications to monitor uh, astronaut health now one of the very important aspects of um, space research and technology in healthcare is we are maintaining the uh, astronaut health and you know once they are also back so we are giving them different exercises but 
how can um, it improve the patient care here on Earth? So not everyone will be working with an astronaut or, you know, we do not have such populations that uh, we have a specific, uh, you know, focus on space. But what is the beauty of, you know, space physiotherapy or any um, space field is its terrestrial applications. So science experiments um, which are performed on astronauts in space has actually improved our understanding of medical condition on earth as well as it has led to development of uh, clinical versions of many technologies that can be uh, used on earth so so far we have seen uh, how astronauts are being trained how they are being you know taken care of how they are exercising what all resources available to end this particular webinar, I would just like to highlight how um, the, the um, benefits of research and technology, which are actually being uh, you know, designed for space, has informed the physiotherapy practices. So first and foremost, I would like to talk about the tele-rehabilitation. Now, in COVID era, and even before that, many of us were using tele-rehabilitation, which has enabled us uh, to interact with the patient, perform assessment, and treatment. So tele-rehabilitation is one of the widely used uh, application of space technology. Here, concerning to patients on Earth, this is something called as biomonitor. Uh, it is all-in-one wearable technology, which is uh, designed to fit into uh, an astronaut's daily routine when they are, you know, on board while monitoring and recording the vital signs. So this system it actually includes a smart shirt and uh, an application. So they have to wear the shirt, and there is um, an application, and through this it gives us. Um, a variety of health parameters that can be, you know, monitored uh, very easily. For example, it gives data about pulse and electrical activity of the heart, the blood pressure, um, breathing rate, volume, skin temperature, oxygen saturation, physical activities, and so on. Now, what is the earth application of this biomonitor is, now this in Canada is now being used uh, for individuals who are bedridden, housebound or who are living into communities with limited access to medical support now the another use of uh, this is it can also be used in sports uh, sports physiotherapy so it can be used to um, improve the professionals uh, the, their sports performances as well and also to monitor their performances the second is the anti-gravity treadmill here. Now, this is a specialized uh, rehabilitation tool uh, that uses air pressure to support patient's body weight, and it reduces the mechanical uh, load uh, going through their joints when they are walking or running. Now, it can improve mobility and help to maintain, you know, or improve the fitness. The two main types of users, what I see for uh, an anti-gravity treadmills or, or individuals, those who can be benefited are first who are, um, you know, whose mobility is uh, heavily compromised. For example, if someone has uh, had a lower limb surgery. And second, uh, those individuals that need to manage the training load on their lower limbs. For example, if someone is uh, returning from a musculoskeletal lower limb injury and it has many more other applications. So I'm just giving you a few examples here. Yeah. So here on the left, you can see some treatment suits are being designed. So on the left is the Italy and the region. So what happened was Russia has developed penguin suits for uh, their cosmonauts. So uh, usually, uh, all those uh, individuals who travel to space, we call them astronauts, but um, uh, Russian space agency, they use the term cosmonauts. So cosmonauts are the Russian astronauts, and like India, they are using the term viomonauts. 
So uh, they have uh, developed a penguin suit um, uh, for their cosmonauts to maintain healthy bones and muscles. Now, this suit provides loading along the length of the body. So that was axial loading uh, could be provided with the uh, penguin uh, suit in a way uh, that was compensating for the lack of daily loading that the body will usually experience in uh, Earth's gravity environment. Now, Edley and Regent treatment suits, these are the clinical versions of these penguin suit. While Edley, it is used for uh, comprehensive treatment of cerebral palsy in children. Uh, the treatment method uh, through this suit, it is actually focused on restoring functional links of the body through corrective flow of uh, the sensory motor information to the muscles and thereby improving the health of the tissues which have been loaded. Okay, And with this suit, uh, it was easy to correct the walking patterns and stabilize during the balance activities in a relatively shorter period of time. The another clinical um, version of penguin suit was the regent uh, suit. And the complex effect of the suit on the body is based on, again, increased axial loading on the skeletal structure, um, which will result into increase of sensory information to the nervous system, which is <clears throat> important when you are treating um, development of, you know, pathological posture or normalization of a vertical stance or walking control, those uh, who had some central nervous system um, uh, pathologies, for example, say cerebrovascular accidents. Next is the G suit. Um, that is the, it is also called as the anti-gravity suit. So while returning, some of the astronauts, they wear this G suit to apply pressure in the legs and the torso so that the cardiovascular deconditioning symptoms do not appear once they are landing. Now, the one of the application of this uh, G suit is uh, they are being used uh, for women who are suffering from postpartum hemorrhage by applying the external pressure to the entire lower limb to stop bleeding after the childbirth. Motor imagery protocol, um, very widely used, I will say. Uh, this was also developed um, for by you know Italian Space Agency, and it is one of the tools which are being used in the neuromotor uh, rehabilitation. The FRED, that is the functional readaptive exercise device, it is one of the um, you know interventions uh, which are in trials to be used for non-specific low back pain on Earth. And apart from that, there are many more. For example, you have short arm uh, human centrifuge, which can help patients with restricted mobility, for example, who are undergoing disuse muscle atrophy. There are other workout recently uh, hit, that is high intensity interval training. A new prescription has been uh, given for astronauts, which, uh, you know, which was aimed to actually reduce the total time duration that is two and a half what they do per day to but to achieve the same uh, benefits now um, the most compelling uh, part of this hit workout um, exercise prescription is that uh, if it has been um, followed on sedentary by sedentary people or those who have long working sitting hours it can uh, protect the people against 23 hours of you know inactivity so that is one of the implications and the last which i would like to share is um, the astronaut exercise program for cancer patients now it has been observed that the changes which are seen in uh, patients who are having cancers are similar to that what um, an astronaut experience in space, which is called as a space fog. For example, there is a decrease in muscle mass, they have bone demineralization, changes in heart function, and so on. But we are prescribing exercises to astronauts. Then why not this for um, the patients who are having cancers on Earth? So uh, a team of astronauts and a space agents 
it's now working upon developing an exercise countermeasures for uh, individuals who are having um, cancer so as to uh, combat the um, or to mitigate the effects of treatment side effects like your chemotherapy and so on. So these are some of the terrestrial applications which I can say, and I would not take much of your time and I'll just conclude. So I feel exercises are integral part to maintain uh, human health in space and optimize their performance. But I will here like to show video of uh, an astronaut uh, who has to say something about the exercises. One thing to remember is you want to enter your space flight in as best shape as possible. It's hard to make up for a lack of exercise while you're in space, but it is much easier to be able to maintain where you are and maybe get a little better if you enter the flight, if you launch in pretty good physical condition. For now, the best way to stay healthy in a zero gravity environment is to exercise. Yeah. So even he agreed that the best way to stay healthy in a microgravity environment is uh, through exercise. So I would like to thank you all for joining me today. And I hope that this session has given you some glimpses of, you know, uh, exercise countermeasures that are being done uh, in spare microgravity environment. This is the you know, one of the clips which I have taken uh, when I was interacting with NASA astronaut, uh, Professor Jeffrey Hoffman, and he was discussing uh, with me how his first flight and then second flight was different and what, uh, you know, exercises he did and how it has actually helped him once he was back on Earth. So as we look uh, to the future of space exploration, I would encourage you to stay engaged with the latest research and advice advancements in this field along with its terrestrial applications and I would like to thank you uh, once again. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks Karima. Um, I think uh, now we can open the forum for any questions. If any of the participants have any questions, let me please ask. Any questions from the participants? Uh, uh, Garima, then uh, I have got some one or two questions. The first is regarding the equipments. So yes. you say that those equipments are uh, fitted in space stations. So they will be in a gravity environment or zero gravity environment? Sir, zero gravity environment. And that's what uh, I have said that you have an isolation device which was mounted, right? So that isolation yeah, yeah, device has been mounted on the modules, but they will be in the microgravity environment and they have specific uh, principles. Like I said, a red device, it has calisters, which has vacuum. So when, a, when an astronaut is pulling against it, that's how the load has been created. Achha, so a concentric exercise will stay as a concentric exercise. It will not get converted into a lengthening contraction, something like that. So that is the whole principle. Achha. So the vacuum will give resistance. Yes, sir. Because and what on, about Earth, this, uh, have, oh, sorry. on Earth, we have two ways. One is the gravity and another is the mechanical force. So same principle, we are applying it uh, there in this space. So we do not have gravity, but we do have a mechanical load. Achha. And uh, what about the energy consumption uh, matlab by uh, energy I, uh, what i read yesterday yesterday only i was just reading and they said that the energy output is much more higher in space yes. than energy in yes then sir. how that do they is... calculate for that so there are different calculations which are been available for yes. different space agencies but as a physiotherapist that's what we are you know uh, we are working towards making protocols uh, that will reduce the duration. So the energy consumption is very high as compared to that of uh, the Earth. And it is in, it increases much more higher uh, when uh, they are going for an EVA. So uh, what we are doing, like I just talked about the HIT 
uh, uh, newly prescribed HIT protocol for the astronauts. So we are developing new protocols, which will also, uh, you know, take into picture uh, regarding the energy consumption, what uh, you have just said. So usually it will be a mixture of both aerobic and resistance exercise. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, yes, sir. So, uh, any questions from participants? So, uh, is there any question? Yes, sir. Yeah, please, please go ahead. Can we use resistance band or theraband in, instead of the machines? Yes, we can, but the problem will be uh, the load which you will be providing. And second thing is, uh, when you pull a thera band, okay, as you pull it longer and longer, you know, apart, the resistance changes throughout, okay. But the machines which are being installed, once you select, that remains, um, you know, constant while performing a particular set of exercises. But you can definitely use thera bands. There is no obligations to it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Just another question. I think it may be a stupid question. Uh, uh, is there any calculation uh, like uh, 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 doing an exercise underwater and uh, doing an exercise in a microgravity environment? Will there be any difference or can we compare the effects, something like that? Sir, actually, uh, when we talk about astronaut training pre-flight, there is a component of cool therapy. So we actually also train them uh, in, uh, you know, pools uh, so that they get an effect uh, of, uh, you know, microgravity, they experience. And second thing is also once they are coming back, uh, the same thing, uh, we do it once they are back because they have been stayed in microgravity environment and immediately we cannot expect them to perform the entire one hour or, you know, um, one and a half hour of exercises in 1G. So we also do it in, uh, you know, uh, swimming pool. So you're coming to your questions, the uh, intensities and the type of exercises, it, they all are, uh, you know, individually tailored for that particular uh, astronaut. Okay. Uh, it's also another hypothetical question. Assuming that uh, if you do an exercise underwater in space, in space, what will be it like? Yeah, in sir, space. Assuming that uh, we have got an environment where we can go for exercises underwater, what it will be like? Uh, just a hypothetical question. I'm just. Sir, uh, in, in space, if uh, I would encourage you to go and see that even the water floats. So, what we no, know about water on Earth okay it's completely different what water will be there uh, in space so I, I i cannot actually answer but uh comparing uh you exercise underwater on earth and when you exercise in microgravity environment those two can be comparable okay thank you i think uh, i have taken more time than I have asked you to be present for, and I understand that it's early hour in Scotland. And uh, in case if there are any other further questions from participants, we will have one or two questions. Yeah, yeah, please, please. Ma'am, uh, usually when we do any activity on Earth, because of gravity or resistance, we spend energy. But in space, we do not have gravity. Work become easy. So why their expenditure is so high in space? Because of changes in the metabolism. Okay, there are a lot of physiological. So if you have attended or if you have read anything about space physiology, there are a lot of metabolic changes which are going on. So that is the primary reason uh, why uh, the you know energy consumption is more. And second thing, although you have said that gravity is absent, okay, but the mechanical loads are not. So I said there are two types of forces which, you know, we talk when we talk about ex astronaut physical fitness. One is the gravity and another one is the mechanical load. Okay. So I think uh, it answers your question. If I may add a little uh, to your question, actually even the splanching blood flow and the absorption, absor uh, nutrient absorption, it is on the lower side in space. And the astronauts, they usually suffer from this thing. They usually have a taste inhibition. 
they will not be able to eat and uh, there is also a dietary changes i think uh, so uh, that's what I said, sir. Go- there will be changes yeah. in the metabolism and this metabolism is related to various factors so i i do not yeah. actually comment upon the nutrition in space or the engineering in space or the mission uh, you know the mission task which are been given like i said uh, once you are in space um, the energy consumption is more than that of the earth but once the astronaut is out of the international space station for any space war the energy consumption will be much more higher so yeah. uh, any further question yes ma'am one more yeah yeah please please Ma'am, uh, whatever exercise we saw, it was mostly for the major muscle group, muscle groups and the uh, weight bearing joints. What about smaller muscles and the smaller joints, ma'am? Yeah. Will so, they end up for uh, demineralization? No. So, uh, so the space physiology it says that under the influence bones and muscles they are formed. because of two things first under the influence of 1g environment and second the mechanical forces or the loads which are imposed upon now the mechanical forces or the gravity these are majorly counteracted by the you know what you call as anti gravity muscles or the major muscle groups and the load bearing is also done by the lower body okay and this is the reason that we concentrate more on lower body exercises like loading them and uh, you know targeting those muscle groups second thing what you ask about the small muscles so uh, these muscles or the upper limb muscles they do not undergo degeneration or you know atrophy as that of the lower limbs because even on earth we do not use them more against gravity okay very small muscles what you are talking about but what happens is when uh, an astronaut has been assigned for an eva which i could not cover in this particular uh, you know section at that time a specific component for example a shoulder maintenance program is added twice a week shoulder maintenance or a upper limb maintenance program is added twice a week so as to mitigate those negative effects which they will be having for an eva for example shoulder injuries are very common then uh, finger dislocations they are very common so totally depends upon what the astronaut will be doing in space our exercise protocols are specially designed for that thank you thank you, thank you for, yeah yeah so can we wind it up or do you have any other questions so i really thank uh, garima i think it's very early morning there and uh, really happy that uh, you are able to give some time and uh, some inputs and uh, this is something of uh, as i have said in the previous seminar also uh, something working in gravity against gravity for you uh, micro gravity zero gravity that is uh, not uh, you know we are not uh, habituated to such kind of environments so it's a really nice session and in case if uh, there are any more further opportunities that come up uh, for us to learn and if there are any openings uh, we would like to hear it from you so that we can also share with the potential participants who are interested in this particular area i really thank thank you and thank i really thank uh, uh, my administration director crc lucknow and director pdu nappd for giving us an opportunity to have this program today really thank you and uh, last uh, my really heartfelt thanks to all the participants for their patience listening uh, please give us the feedback form also so that will help us to improve our uh, webinars or seminars or any other further programs in the future thank you and i wish you a happy day thank you so much